Hello, hello, hello. It is time to draw with me. I'm Danny Gregory, and we're here. We are getting ready to have some fun. We have fists full of pens in the waiting. And it's Thursday. Little Friday, as it's known by some, by me. In a time when Friday... What did I hear somebody refer to it as not whatever's day, but something like that. So it's like that. It's whatever's day. And uh, it is nice to see so many people here. Mary Ann McDonald Wettler. Let's get on with it. I agree. Chris Seidel. Yes. And Elena, Cecile, Lisa. Thank you all. Thank you. Welcome to my new fantasy painting studio. You know, it's important when you're in lockdown to go to different places, however you can do it. And I'm doing it virtually. So thank you all. Thistle, hello. Renata and Pimp Mama. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Timmy, Diane, thank you all for joining me. So here's what I wanted to do a couple things today. First of all, I want to talk about what we're going to draw. And I think what we're going to each draw is going to be different because it's going to be personal, okay? And what I would like us to draw, and again, this is purely optional. What matters most is that you do actually draw. But um, what I want you to draw is, or what I'm going to be drawing, is something that kind of represents this time. Like this time that we have been in this situation and the coronavirus lockdown, pandemic, wave one, two, three, new wave, old wave, whatever it is, situation. What is a thing that represents that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like masks and hand sanitizers and whatevs, but is there something more that means something to you that you can put in your sketchbook as a kind of a thing that says, yeah, this is... This is this. So I'll, I'll talk about what I'm going to do in a minute. But in the meantime, why don't you think about what that could be for you? And maybe that's what you want to draw, is you want to draw something um, that represents this. Okay? So um, let's think about that. Let's also think about what we did last week, which was awesome. Last week we drew Marley, the big burrito, the... Uh, the hairy top. What's what else? He has so many names. Lids, um, the churro. Anyway, um, we uh, drew him, and we went out and gathered up as many of these as we could find, and we put together a little collection because I wanted to give it to Marley's owners, my brother and sister-in-law, and say, "Look at how amazingly <laughs> inspiring uh, Marley turned out to be." And uh, so let's just have a look at that. So this is the Marley Draw With Me collection. And I just grabbed a whole bunch of these. Unfortunately, I don't have the artist's name in this document, although I know whose they are and I have them recorded somewhere else. But uh, if it's, let's think of this as more of sort of an anonymous show, with the exception of this one, because I made this one, so I know that it's me. But... Uh, there are just so many different, interesting, amazing interpretations of Marley. And uh, it was just su such personality, different media that people used. I like this little sort of uh, um, heraldic element. Yes. Amazing, right? Watercolors, 
I love that expression. And it captures his sort of burrito-like body with little tiny legs sticking out. This is like an entire page, a beautiful illustrated journal page with a fantastic likeness of me at the corner. And uh, yes, yeah, somebody uh, emulated my little, my little uh, barn thing. Little notes around. I love to see notes and writing next to a drawing. There's something just very nice and loose about that drawing too that I love. Lots of nice little marks in the fur there. Nice watercolor lines. Those little dashes of blue in there are really cool too. More blue. Blue and orange, complementary colors, bringing out some zing. Again, a nice kind of wash thing with some line added later on that really gives it some dimension and bulk. I like this, the nose on this one, sort of like a little rat-like, which is nice. I like rats. Here's a, I love this one going right across the, the gutter, right across the spine. And look at how kind of chunky it is, almost like warthog-like, it's great. This is very beautiful. Very subtle, I think. I really like the lightness and handling of all these. Here's an entire little um, essay about the, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Possessive, bossy, and an attitude much larger than their body. It's true. At this point, Marley Falstaff, a.k.a. Kilbasa, is a little... He's a little, um, you know in his retirement years, I would say. So he's a little less bossy, less of a boss. But he has been bossy in the past. Very nice, just simple, simple pencil drawing. Colored pencil. Nice little watercolor. Love this one. Look at those colors. I love that blue teal bar behind it. Really, like, makes him pop. This is a very nice watercolor. Here's a whole elaborate kind of framing around it with words, just that's really great. Really, really nice. Love the caption, nice calligraphy. Very nice reclining, post-run or post-prandial. I don't think it was post-prandial, but uh, yeah. Series, uh, this is kind of all done in like shades of brown ink, basically, a little bit of black. I also like the where the lettering is is done too. Very nice treatment with lines. <laughs> this expression is great. Look at that sort of like, oh yeah. Very nice. Yes. There's a little rubber stamp in the corner that says happy place. And this one this one is I think really interesting too. I like this sort of juxtaposition of this, that rubber stamp, it almost looks like, you know, the official Marley stamp, but then the energy and the color is really great. So yeah, there we have it. I'm sure there are more out there, but those are the ones that I found relatively quickly. So it was really nice to, it's just so, I love to see variations on a theme, don't you? To see Lots and lots of different people drawing the same thing. I mean, I like to draw the same thing over and over again to just see the different ways that I do it, the different versions of me that I might find in my sketchbook. And uh, But this one, to see, like, old familiar Marley, you know, who is unfortunately not staying with us any longer, but was at the time, and just to see that that celebration of him. So nice. So great. Thank you all for doing that, and thanks all for taking the trouble to share it with this hashtag daily drawing habit. I'm not sure about this hashtag daily drawing habit. It was suggested by somebody else. I like the idea of a daily drawing habit. The question is, is draw with me a daily drawing habit, or should we do hashtag draw with me? I'll get back to you next week after I've spoken to some experts about what the thing is. So for this week, again, if you want to do daily drawing habit, let's use that so we can at least track things down, okay? But thank you all for doing it, and uh, thank you for, for sharing. So, okay, so as I was saying, today I was thinking we would focus on just what is something that represents this time? Have you figured that out? Have you thought of something that you want to do, something you want to draw? It might be something 
in front of you. It might be something that you're thinking of, um, you know, but just something that like maybe has taken on new significance. Um, hashtag draw with me, people like. Okay, all right, let's do it then. Hashtag draw with me. Releasing it today. Hashtag draw with me. That's it. Draw with me. Okay. That's what we're going with. Somebody else might be using it, whatever. But that's that's what we're going with. Hashtag draw with me. Okay. The votes are all in. They seem unanimous. So, okay. As I was saying, you know, uh, we're all going through the same thing on some level, right? I mean, we're all reacting to it possibly differently. But, I mean, here I am in Arizona, which I'm sure you've heard has now become, you know, all spiky again. Not again. It's, you know, that it's suddenly become, as New York has seemed to manage to flatten the curve, Arizona, which frankly doesn't really surprise me because I've seen the behavior of people here, I've seen how rarely you, see, saw, you saw people in masks. It's changed in the last week or two, but for a long time, you just never saw people with masks. You just, it just wasn't, it just didn't seem like people were really paying attention. And then we heard all these stories over the last couple of weeks from friends who live here who have teenage children, that they were having these graduation parties that are kind of amazing that in this day and age, despite the desire to celebrate graduation, I can understand that. But they were, we knew of people whose kids went to to parties that had 200 people in them. And then we heard that at that party of 200 people, 50 or 60 of them came down with the virus. I mean, what do you expect? Anyway, I don't really want to talk about all that stuff, but I do want to talk about the fact that we need, to, we need to use our art to channel our feelings about this. That's my feeling about it. We need to use our art to acknowledge it in some... Well, not acknowledge it. There's no need to... <laughs> we don't need help acknowledging it. Um, but, you know, just to, to share our feelings, at least with ourselves, at least with the page. So, um, so this is the thing that I thought I would do is... This is a tube of toothpaste. I just finished it yesterday. Squeeze the bejesus out of it. And this is the second tube of toothpaste that I have emptied since I left home. I left home on March 10th. So today is 107 days since we left home. And now apparently we're not allowed to go back for an indeterminate amount of time because if you're from, if you're in Arizona and you go to Cal to New York or Connecticut or New Jersey, you have to go into quarantine for two weeks. I'm not quite, I have no idea how anybody's planning to enforce that, but we'll see. We weren't going, plan to go back immediately anyway. We can't. So, in any case, um, so I was thinking that this is a milestone for me. You know, it's, a, it's just a rolled up tube of toothpaste but it somehow represents the amount of time that has passed. And I've gone through two tubes of toothpaste since this thing began. You know, again, one of those sort of innocuous things, but now it has some significance. As I, you know, as Proust said, you know, I measured out my life or my days in coffee spoons. I'm measuring out mine in toothpaste tubes. So... In any case, it's true, as Eliza says, we can't collect a coronavirus break. I would say we did, actually, because we were fortunate in that we weren't in New York at the beginning. So we managed to avoid that. And, you know, we've actually been extremely careful since we've come here. So the rest of Arizona seems to now be taking it seriously, and that's hopefully what it change the situation. So anyway, so I thought that's what I would draw. I'm not sure what you want to draw. And I don't think there's any point you're drawing my tube of toothpaste. So I'm just going to have it sort of sitting by the side. And I'm going to um, switch to this camera. So we can have a look at it there. It, here it is again. It is, uh, it's Pepsodent, which is sort of an old kind of toothpaste. But it's, I don't know, it's one I've always, I've had, I, I think my mother first was the one who introduced me to it. But um, yeah, 
So I am going to I'm going to use some Sumi ink because that's my my weapon of choice these days, and uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of it into my into my little. Um, I mentioned I should told you about these last time. This is uh, what's it called? I forget what these little. Uh, uh, I'll think of its name in a minute. Um, these little dishes that I bought that are um, really designed not for art supplies, but for hors d'oeuvres or something. It's called, uh, can somebody think of what it's called? Um, anyway, it's it functions as a little palette for me. And I have my jar of water here, and I have this not so great, fairly inexpensive watercolor brush. It'll do fine. And, uh, and I have my tube of toothpaste. So I'm going to start just kind of just doing it. And you work in the media of your choice. There's something quite nice to me about um, this particular form. Um, somebody's mentioned that they like the idea that I'm drawing on paper. I know you, you anti-digital people out there. Maybe you've become more, uh, more accepting of digital stuff in these, this day and age, or maybe not. Maybe you're looking for refuge from, from machines. I can understand that too. I was thinking, you know how um, Apple put this what they thought was probably a helpful feature onto um, all their devices, which is called screen time. And it measured how much time you spent um, on your devices, I guess, in order to, I think it was really more for parents, but it was basically supposed to sort of shame you into not spending as much time on your devices. And, and that seems like sort of a cruel thing to be telling us in this day and age because what else would we be spending time on? Our screens. But anyway, I'm yes, I'm spending time making art this way. And I have been doing it for, for uh, I don't know, a month or so. I mean, I still draw my iPad sometimes, but I definitely have a desire to make stuff with paper and analog media. So. This is sort of a fun thing to draw, to decide how, what I'm gonna draw with a brush Am I going to draw all of this with a brush? We'll see. Sorry, my camera's being a bit flaky here. There we go. Thistle says, I find my, I use my iPad when I want really bright, bold colors. Maybe that's, that's part of what it is because I have been working monochromatically for some time now. And uh, I've just been, I, this whole sketchbook, as I showed you last time, um, it's all it's all just ink, black ink, India ink, and uh, and Sumi ink. Do you like to write upside down? I quite do. What's cool about writing upside down is you are less connected to the meaning of the letters and more connected to the shapes.
because they take they lose some of their significance. I mean, I can read almost as well upside down. I'm not boasting or anything like that, but I can read almost as well upside down as I can right side up. So it's not. It doesn't really lose its meaning to me. Uh, I can see that this says Pepso. Here's an irony, a very specific one. As I mentioned, my mother is the one who I think introduced me to Pepsodent. I, been using it for a long time. My mother's nickname in our family, my mother's nickname, it's something that everybody calls her, like particularly her grandchildren, they all call her this, Pipsy. Um, my grandmother's parent, my mother's parents were German, and uh, Pipsy is short for Pipschen, which means little doll. Now, if you knew my mother, that it would seem to be a singularly inappropriate nickname. She is not doll-like in any way, but for some reason, that is what people have called her in our family always. And then there's Pepsodent. So anyway, So um, this, what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of thinking about some of the tone. There's some tone in this. I'm also deciding like how insane do I want to get about the lettering? Probably not very much, you know? I mean, I could indicate the lettering, but I kind of like the shape of this and it's distracting sometimes to have too much lettering on things. I'm excited about this weekend because we have um, Ian Fenley's workshop, which you can't sign up for anymore. It's, it's closed now, but um, hopefully you did sign up. I certainly uh, think it's going to be great. Ian is so, he's so nice and, and hilarious. We were having a whole conversation a couple days ago about the workshop, and, and then we were talking about... Um, Manchester, where he is from, and he was telling me about how he's he plays the guitar, and I said to him, maybe he could play the guitar during breaks at the workshop, which I think he might do. We'll see. We'll see. It might anger some people who's, who are very serious about these things and don't believe we should be wasting time on workshops where people have paid money to do things like sing songs and when I said I said it would be nice yeah I, mean, I said maybe you could sing some regional songs from Liverpool I said I can't I said are there any famous musicians from Liverpool and uh, we talked a bit about the Stone Roses which are from Manchester actually and um, you know we couldn't really think of anybody famous music wise who would come from Liverpool so I don't know maybe Maybe in the distant past there was, but uh, so we'll see what he comes up with. We'll see if he comes up with anything that um, you know that feels that feels appropriate for for that. I don't know. Maybe maybe some of you English people can give us some suggestions. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so that that is one of the things that I'm excited about is. Thinking about this workshop, and also, you know, as a, as we are going to have this feedback session, it's going to be very cool to see all the stuff that people are going to do in uh, in response, because we're going to actually get to see people's work on Saturday night and uh, have some comments on it, which will be pretty cool. Pretty excited about that, and. Um, This is, uh, I can't.
can't, I'm not interested in actually writing out all these little words that are here on the bottom of this tube because it's distracting. It's distracting to have a bunch of letters that you can read. So I'm, this is an old advertising trick. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. It's called, um, well, it's sometimes known as Greeking, I guess. Greeking. Because it's, uh, sometimes when you do a layout in advertising, when you do a, um, just put together a little, what's called a comp, you indicate the, the type with a, with a copy, the words are going to go, but you don't want to actually put in the real words, so you just indicate it, um, sometimes with this, these little kind of just abstract little lines, but sometimes you use a paragraph or two of copy that is that says something along the lines of lorem ipsum etc etc it's got it's 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 latin but for some reason it's known as greek um, and it is known as greek even though it's not greek Lorem ipsum, right? And Helene, welcome from Iowa. We are, uh, we're not drawing toothpaste tubes. We're drawing something that feels evocative, representative of the times we are going through. What has our experience been like? What is a thing that is true for you not necessarily true for everybody, but it's true for you um, as a sign of what we're going through, of the time that we've been going through. It could be something that you will look back on, that you'll show your great-grandchildren and say, yes, back in the exciting, roaring 20s, boring 20s, this is what we, this is what we did. Who knows? When I have grandchildren, if I ever do, great-grandchildren, they may not know what toothpaste is. They may have some whole other technology. They may be amazed that we would rub brushes on our teeth. Who knows? Probably not. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's looking forward to this weekend. That's one thing. And I was kind of thinking, because as I said, it's been 109 days, that what if I just put X's? You know how like a prisoner will put X's on the, or maybe it's, is it hashtag? Yes, it's, so it's like one, two, three, four, line. All right, this will be boring for you to watch, but it's kind of interesting to me. One, one, two, three, four, line. One, two, three, four, line, etc. I'm just doing it in very diluted ink so that it doesn't kind of overwhelm the page, but I, th I think it could be kind of a cool sort of background texture. And then I'll write something somewhere that explains what, what the hell this is for. So I'll know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's 50. Um, 
don't I don't want to break my concentration too much while I'm doing this really tedious thing just because uh, I don't want to miscount. 107 days since I left home. That's my idea. <sighs> okay. I don't know that these are hashtags. They're they're not hashtags. They are, um, you know, they're counts, right? Like a prison does. Does they, do they look too much like hashtags? Oh well. Maybe I'll have to write these are not hashtags. So I have this whole other page here on this side that I might write a, like a little story about later on after I can concentrate and uh, just say, this is what I'm thinking. <sighs> um. This last month in particular has been just what it's just been increasingly complicated. I think that's the way I've been feeling. It's like increasingly complicated. Initially, it seemed like we were going down this road that suddenly was detouring onto another road, and we would just have to go down that road for a finite amount of time, and then we would arc back onto the regular road, and life would continue essentially leaving this behind as a memory. But I think increasingly that's, it's become evident that that's not really what's going to happen at all. Um, that in fact, the world has changed. And, you know, I think there's really nothing to compare to, obviously. I mean, it's, it's hard not to grasp and reach for, for cliches, but, you know, I think that the fact that everything has changed. There are times that I respond to that by, by being excited by it. Tallies, thank you, Margaret. Uh, tallies, yes. Um, the fact that, uh, oh, Stephanie's leaving, okay. Um, anyway, where I was, was saying, um, normally times of change are times of creativity because we are forced to create whatever is going to come next. We're forced to recombine our experiences into and, and, and our knowledge into some new form, you know, and that is happening to some extent. I mean, I think Black Lives Matter is certainly an indication of that, but there's also so it's, it's such three-dimensional, four-dimensional chess because we're also dealing with with time and we've been talking a lot about kids who are graduating from high school and going to college or not going to college that's the short term preparing to go to college or not but the longer term is what are you going to college for and what are we preparing for in the future so um you know i try as much as possible to stay focused on the present that's been the thing that has given me the most relief when I've gone through trauma in the past was just to focus on what is rather than constantly trying to conjure up versions of what will be. And drawing has helped me to do that. Drawing has helped me by focusing my mind on the present in order to draw something. And I've talked to you about that before. But, um, you know, ramekins, thank you. Thank you. Ramekins, that's what those little dishes are called. Um, but, Concentrating on the present also seems like being oblivious. But yet we can't concentrate on the future because we have, I mean, nobody has any idea about it. 
so that is also um, is also problematic. Um, I will say that I've been focusing on things at Sketchbook School. I mean, I think uh, doing these workshops has been very helpful to me because it's given me um, a way of making stuff and helping people to learn, but also uh, events that allow us to get together. And I think that that's important. Draw With Me has been important. Uh, the live drawing parties that we did were also important in that way. But we're preparing some changes at Sketchbook School that I think will be some of the biggest changes we've ever made. And part of them are in response to what we've heard from, from you. And part of it is what we think people will need in the future. We're trying to think about how, how will making art, learning about art, being part of a creative community change or how is it changing and how do we adapt to that how do we make new things um, part of it is just how do we make our technology work better um, so we're getting ready to do some really wholesale changes there but also really you know is taking a six-week course by yourself really that is that the main thing that I want to be working on or are there other things like these workshops like this live event things that allow us to come together because I feel like that is really important. Um, not everybody likes it. Not everybody wants it. There are people who would just as soon do stuff on their own. So I want to accommodate those people too. But I also want to say, how do we use this technology? A technology that I think we are all have been forced to get used to using, right? How many people, how many of you never watched a live streaming event before? Never participated in video conferences with your family before. I'm sure all these are things that we're getting more and more used to. They're becoming more and more commonplace. So how do we take them and, you know, use them, use the fact that we're used to this stuff as a way of coming together, you know? I mean, we were literally a week or so away, away from booking a hotel or choosing a destination for the next SketchCon before all this happened in, in early late February, early March, we were planning that. Clearly, that's not going to happen. Um, but also, there's I'm sure there's a lot of things that you've wanted to do. Workshops you wanted to go to. Um, you know, experiences you wanted to have that you can't do for now. Hopefully, we'll get back to those things. But for now, what do we do? So all those things are things that we're thinking about. And, you know, and also, how can we continue to, to sort of provide a more, I would call it authentic experience. You know, I think that that's, that's part of what this allows us to do, this, this kind of live streaming thing, is it allows us to have um, a connection that isn't, that is polished enough to work well, but not so polished that it feels slick or inhuman. So just a lot of things that I'm thinking about um, and trying to also frankly try to trying to find new ways to provide ideas and quote unquote inspiration um, in the way that I used to do on my blog. I, I blogged for many years um, and I found that that form is less and less interesting to me because I like the immediacy of this connection. But I also want to take some of these ideas that I've been having, essays that I've been writing, and give them to you in a way that will be helpful. One of the things that we've been doing is this um, list, um, Danny's List, which is, it's not a terribly imaginative name, but it's basically every Friday I send out an email essay. And I have to say the response and the dialogue that I've been having with people as a result of sending out these essays has been incredible. Um, I try to respond as much as I can to the responses that I get to my response to the universe. Um, so I send out a little email essay and some people write back to me and then I try and dialogue with them. So it's all that kind of thing has been really um, interesting and and um, has given me, you know, a way of taking an idea that kind of falls into my head and then sharing it and then developing it and getting a response by having some feedback. So um, it's a new form again for me to be sending out little emails like this, but it's it's been really great. And if you want to do it, if you want to sign up for it, just do. Go to this place. It's free. Sign up for it, and I'll send you something tomorrow. Um, so 
I, I think just being having more of a chance. I feel like I've gone in and out of sort of dialogue with you over the years. There have been times that I've been um, completely kind of vanished, I think, or not posting anything, not writing anything, apparently kind of disappeared from the scene. I've had a lot of people to say to me at various points, like, well, we assume that you were gone and may never come back. <laughs> um, and I can understand that. I, I'm always busy, always doing stuff, but sometimes it's apparent and sometimes it isn't. Um, and, you know, I want to have more opportunities to do that. So that's in part of what is in my thinking these days. So um, let's see. Becky says, I'm so touched by the Danny's List essays. feels like a personal connection that is so nice during these isolated times. Thank you, Becky. You know, I, I do try and um, reflect. I'm not, I don't write about the virus and quarantine and things like that particularly. It's really more about just whatever is is on my, my mind um, or has been on my mind. Um, and, you know, this is this is an opportunity for, for that. So I'm seeing lots of very nice comments um, like, like this from Trix saying how important Sketchbook School has been. And, you know, I think that it's it's incredibly rewarding to make stuff and to to have a sense that you're actually making a difference to people. So that's really nice. Um, and you know, I hope to just find new ways of doing that. So, you know, I think that that there is a new form that we're going to be testing and then releasing in the next few months. I think that um, will allow us to engage more intensely with each other. What I mean by that is the, the, the normal way that I've worked is um, I write a book, let's say, and it goes to a publisher, and then hopefully you buy it or take it out from the library and read it, and then maybe you send me an email, but most of the time you just have the book and it's of some use to you. But it, there's, no, there's no connection, there's no back and forth. Sketchbook School... We make courses, and there's been some opportunity for conversation around those courses. Some, um, but I, I again feel like I want to have a more uh, more feedback to you and from you, and also more of an opportunity to intersect with each other over time. I mean, it's amazing how many people I've heard from, even in the last month, who said, "Oh, I've been f reading your stuff for." many, many years and I've never written to you. And I'm like, oh, well, thanks for stepping out of the shadows. I love to hear from people who have read my stuff and and that's how I can you know, know what to do in the future um, is by knowing what is valuable and what could be changed, what could be fixed. But beyond that, it's also the opportunity, I think, to see people who are on an ongoing journey, creative journey, and to be able to say, You've been doing this, and here's a little bit of feedback about what you've been doing, but what about going over here and trying this next? So kind of a, a progression, an ongoing connection, so that you, can, so we can just get deeper. Because I know that when I first started to draw, there were two or three friends that I made who were a little bit further down the road than I was, and I was following in their footsteps, and I was seeing what they were doing, and they were talking to me about what I was doing, and those conversations, and that seeing that uh, the changes and the things that they were going through were so important to me. They made such a difference in terms of how enthusiastic I was, um, what risks I was willing to take, uh, and also just my general sense of like where this could go, you know. So, you know, trying to figure it out, and to some extent we've done that with Sketchbook School, with things like the schoolyard, where it's like bringing a bunch of people together, not just on Facebook, but in our own sort of um, community, is done a fair amount of that. I think people having that connection, being able to see what each other did, or, or even things like today, sharing all those drawings of Marley. I think it's so important to not just connect with an artist who you like, but also to have the sense of what are other people at all different levels of experience also doing, right? So this is a rather opaque and long-winded way of telling you that we're thinking about a lot of these things, 
and trying to make them available to you soon. So expect changes. I think expect the spirit to be the same, but expect the ways in which we engage to expand. I'll leave it at that. I'll tell you more as I do, as I progress. Um, yes, so Myrna has stepped out of the shadows. Excellent. There's some interesting uh, word choices in this message. I'm not quite sure what going deeper. I'm Anyway, uh, I'm glad to see you. And um, Thistle's concerned about money. You know, I understand that. I'm always aware of that. I mean, we obviously need to make money in order to do the things that we do. And making money means that we can spend more time and concentrate on them more. But I also am always aware that that's not necessarily... I don't want to exclude people because of that. So we'll figure it out. Um, so, yes, Sarah says community and belonging with no judgment is what I love about Sketchbook School. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I think being surrounded by people. But I think what I'm also interested in, though, is, is there have been people who have said to me, um, I've been involved with Sketchbook School for a while, but I'm concerned that I don't know if I'm making progress. And I think having that conversation would be great because how do we... How do you know if you're making progress? And how do you make progress? And what does progress even mean? And what are the ways in which you can do it? So I have a lot of ideas about that that I would want to talk to you about. Um, so, yes. You know, we're thinking about that. Um, sorry, I'm just scrolling through some of your very nice comments to see if there's anything um, else I could say. Cynthia says, we need something new. It's true. I mean, I've been frustrated by the fact that, you know, for years we went out and made courses. Tra I traveled the world. We went from Sydney to Barcelona, across the United States, uh, even filmed a course across India, lots of different places, and that's just impossible to do now, and we don't know how for long it will be impossible. The workshops have been a way of bringing you um, some fresh experiences, but I have other ideas for ways that we can do it too. Um, hopefully it will mean that uh, you'll be okay with spending more time with me because I'm going to probably be <laughs> the epicenter of a lot of this stuff. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Deb was disappointed with the last workshop because she couldn't afford the extra for the feedback. Yeah, I mean, we try to keep it affordable. I think it was ex I think it was thirty dollars, um, you know, for that. So, you know, again, what is the balance? You know, we need we need to um, we try to do as many things as we can with no money involved, um, like this. But you know, the more the more we have to work with, the more things we can do. So that's always leave it at that. It's, it's, it's so unpleasant, unsavory to talk about money, isn't it? Um, so Aaron primarily participates in free stuff, and that's good. We want you to. We want you to come to all the free things that we do. Um, and that's, that's fine. If that's all you can afford to do, that's fine. Um, I think our boot camp was a particularly good value. We priced it really inexpensively so that people could could take it because we think building those foundations is really important. And even if you do nothing else, art boot camp is um, a good way to immerse yourself and uh, and to to really build skills that you can use in other ways. But I think it also comes down to a point of saying to yourself, where are the thing, where are the places that you want to spend money? Um, you know, and I think particularly as we're entering into harder economic times, those are choices we have to make even more seriously. Um, and, you know, certainly we appreciate that too. So, yes, um, yes, I know. I appreciate, Deb, uh, the, the sacrifices that you've had to make. You know, and we've, we, um, we also, I mean, I think we gave out, a th we gave out courses to um, essential workers for free. And I think we gave away over a thousand of those. So that was a nice thing to be able to do for free. Um, Thistle says she feels guilty for not supporting Schedule School. <laughs> um, 
yes, well, you know, I certainly don't want you to make important sacrifices for us. That would be that would be crazy. Um, but yeah, thanks anyway for joining us, Ken. Thank you for being part of us, our community too. And um, all right, that's it's that's this has been a contemplative kind of discussion. Maybe this Pepsodent inspired it. Cleansing though, cleansing. We've we've gargled and rinsed out some of our thoughts. I'm gonna have a bit more coffee. Um, yeah, it's been. I mean, it's the the thing that we did with with um, um, the that uh, first responders and it wasn't just first responders. It was it was essential workers too. I kind of assumed the first responders were too busy. Um, but you know, it was just nice to. Th I mean, I I know how important and therapeutic making art can be. And if we could take people who were under extreme stress and give them this as a tool, that would be really good. Um, Mary Lou, you can post it anywhere you want. You can post it on Schoolyard. You can post it uh, on social media. And if you do, please just add the hashtag draw with me. Hashtag draw with me. That's what we decided as a group today that we would do. Hashtag draw with me. Um, Jen says, I find that I don't see improvements immediately after taking a class or workshop, but only after doing the assignments again and again and again. Me too. Like, for instance, the drawing that I was doing today the, was very much inspired by Onmar's workshop a month ago, six, almost six weeks ago. Seeing her draw with watercolor is something that I've gone back to and done more and more and it's become second nature. I think a lot of times we think if I take a class, then I will know how to do something. But of course, you, you don't. You simply know. It's, again, my favorite analogy is to draw, is to driving. You can sit down and read the guidebook, the handbook, before you take your learner's test. Um, you can take driving lessons. But you're not going to know how to drive until you've done it for a while. You know how to drive, but you your body doesn't know how to drive. And similarly with drawing, you know, you just have to find opportunities to apply these lessons. So they're like it's like a big, like it's like a big frozen pie that's sitting in the freezer, and you pull it out, and you need time for it to thaw. You need time for all of that stuff to kind of become room temperature and become, I guess I'm hungry, um, for it all to be, uh, you know, available to you, available to you intuitively, right? So it's not just mentally that you understand the lesson that you learned, but that it becomes part of your wiring, you know? So yeah, so I think that that's, that's a key, a key thing that happens. Um, so yeah, so just final thought about money in our future um, there are a lot of places that you can take art lessons um, most of them are many of them are big platforms big corporations that, that aggregate lots and lots of lessons from lots and lots of people and um, you know they are heavily funded by venture capitalists they come and they go in fact some of you may know that uh, blueprint which was a huge thing blueprint had been craftsy before that just AT&T bought them or no NBC Universal bought them and then about a month ago they just went out closed shop all these people who had lifetime access to their materials that they had paid for gone so we're just a few, a very small number of people, and so we end up doing all these things ourselves. So that means that you know it's just different. We're the equivalent of like the the local store. We're not the big company. So it would be nice to have you know thousands of uh, people out there working for us, and I don't know, driving me around in the corporate jet and uh, sharpening my pencils for me, and. Um, you know that kind of thing but you know i'm just here in my virtual studio my virtual painting studio uh with you so anyway thanks so much yes cynthia says she lost a bunch of classes yeah that's a, that's a shame 
I mean, I think that they're trying to make it up and allow people to download them. But yeah, that was that really shook up the art instruction world. So anyway, I don't really have anything else to say, which for me is unusual, as you know. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and I've squeezed all I can out of this toothpaste tube. This Pepsodent has done its job. It can now go in the trash and I can finish working on my sketchbook page. Thanks very much for joining me today. And um, I will see you again next Thursday. And we will talk some more, but more importantly, draw some more. And in the meantime, I hope you will do some more drawings. I look forward to seeing some of you at the workshop day after tomorrow. It's going to be really, really cool. And um, let's carry on. Be well, stay safe, do all the things you're supposed to do, and make one of them be making art. Hey, maybe that's my sign-off kind of slogan. Do all the things you're supposed to do and make sure that one of them is making art. Registered trademark. <laughs> Bye. I've been in this room for too long. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to paint these walls. I mean, come on.